I wanted us to talk a little bit about kind of what it takes to have uh, conversations that work across some of these divides and in our own personal experiences. And before we uh, jump into the back and forth, I wanted to read a, a couple of passages from a book that's just come out uh, called Impossible Conversations. And it's by a friend of mine, uh, Mr. Peter, Peter Bogosian, uh, and an uh, individual named James Lindsay, uh, who's a mathematician. Uh, Peter is a professor of, I think, philosophy and ethics at Portland State University. And he's sort of <laughs> sort of controversial, sort of well-known for the academics hoax paper scandal. I won't get into that too much here. Uh, but there's a line in the early part of the book, which I highly recommend for folks, uh, but there's a line in the early part of the books where he defines impossible conversations. And he says, when we say impossible conversations, we mean conversations that feel futile because they take place across a seemingly unbridgeable gulf of disagreement in ideas, beliefs, morals, politics, or worldview, right? So those are the types of conversations he's saying are impossible, but the book is about how you have those conversations anyway. And they're not really impossible, but the way we go about them tends to make them impossible. And he actually, interestingly enough, he gives a real-life example of a conversation he had with a colleague that is the is an example of the type of conversation you don't want to have, right? So the title of this section is, is called uh, Conversing with an Asshole. And <laughs> spoiler <laughs> spoiler alert, Peter himself is the asshole in the conversation. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, 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 the uh, woman he's talking to is a woman who uh, with the initials SDL. So they're talking about affirmative action. I'll just read it from the top. He says, nearly two decades ago, one of this book's authors, Peter, was discussing affirmative action with a colleague, SDL, a white female who described herself as liberal. As conversations about controversial topics tend to do, it quickly became heated. Then, as par for the course in these situations, before long, it went downhill fast. Let's take a look back. SDL, you keep denying that if affirmative action is, you keep denying that uh, affirmative action is fair. Bogosian, yeah, that's because it's not. Who's it fair to? STL, I told you already. Traditionally marginalized groups like African Americans, they're coming from a deficit. They didn't have the same opportunities that you and I had. Bogosian, but why does that require manufacturing outcomes? SDL, you sound like a broken record because they're Americans and they deserve better. You don't understand because you've never had those struggles. You've gone to good schools and never dealt with even a fraction of what they deal with on a daily basis. Bogosian, let's say you're right. I don't think you are. But let's say you are. What evidence do you have that affirmative action is a way to remedy past injustices? SDL. I don't have any evidence. It's the right thing to do because Bogosian. So you have no evidence. You have complete confidence in a belief for which you have no evidence. SDL. You're not listening. Peter. I am listening. I'm trying to figure out how you could believe so strongly in something with no evidence. Do you think African Americans are better off with Clarence Thomas? Do you think it was a good thing that he's a Supreme Court justice? Or would African Americans be better off with a white liberal male? SDL, you're effing annoying. Seriously. I can't believe you're a teacher. Lugosian, I'm sorry you feel that way. Maybe if you could better defend your beliefs, you wouldn't be so annoyed with someone who's asking you softball questions. SDL, what do you teach your students? Lugosian, you're not my student, and don't get so upset. SDL, you're an asshole. We're done. <laughs> And so, so he, so Peter recounts this uh, conversation up in, uh, in the early part of the book, and it, it, he and James go on to write that Peter was the one who was in fact being an asshole in the conversation, because Peter was not was not listening. I mean, what would he? Well, I'll just read the following paragraph. Uh, she was right. Peter wasn't listening. He was annoying, and he was being an asshole. In this brief exchange. He interrupted, used but in response to her statements, probably the least wrong thing he did, shifted topics, and didn't answer her questions. He was so focused on winning, and even intellectually embarrassing her, that he ruined the conversation and closed the door to productive future exchanges. SDL walked out on the conversation, but she should have walked away sooner. So that's that passage. What strikes me about that is that if that conversation had happened on Twitter, all of his kind of comebacks and assholery would have been positively <laughs> reinforced by a lot of people like posting gifts and like oh owned and dunked on and all this stuff like yeah right 